Hello and welcome to Rain Francis Art. My name is Rain. Today I'm going to show you how to paint this hummingbird with watercolors. I hope you enjoy it. Let's begin. This is what you'll need for today's painting lesson. You're going to need some paper. I'm using Strathmore cold pressed watercolor paper. It's 140 pound. Any watercolor paper will do. I've painted on 90 pound, 140 pound. I don't think you need to spend a lot of money to um, make great watercolor paintings. So use whatever you have and it'll be perfect. If you want to frame out your canvas, you'll need some masking tape. Obviously you'll need some paints. <laughs> this is a brand that I actually bought at on Amazon. It's called Pretty Excellent. I don't know if that's the brand name. I can't find any other uh, names on this pen. So I think it's called Pretty Excellent. I'm not promoting it in any way. It's just a really, really good set of watercolor paints. The colors are so vibrant. I love this. I'm going to be sticking mostly to blues and greens today for the hummingbird. And I might use a little red, pink, white, and green for the flowers. Also, you'll need some water for your watercolors. I have this, it's very, very well used. That's my watercolor water tray that I use. You'll need some cloth or paper towel to blot your paintbrushes. And speaking of paintbrushes, I have a whole slew of different sizes here. They're round, they're flat. I don't know right now which ones I'm gonna use, but I will list it in the description below when I figure out what I'm using. I have a watercolor palette that I'll be using and I have this acrylic painter pen. It's white. If you don't have this, it's okay. If you've got a little white acrylic paint lying around, that'll be great. Or if you have some uh, white watercolor tube paint, that'll work too because this is basically going to put a little twinkle in the hummingbird's eye at the end. So I'm just going to clear my space here. Get all of my supplies close at hand and I wanted to show you something. I'm often asked how I come up with my stencils. Well, I basically do a lot of drawing because I was not born learning, knowing how to draw something. You know, we, we are not born with that knowledge. We have to learn. So I basically looked at photos of hummingbirds. I hope you can see this all right. And I looked at the shapes and I was drawing little circles and then slowly building up, you know, to what I thought a hummingbird might look like. I also have a kid's art channel and I'll link that below. So I thought of one that I could do for kids too in the future. And I was playing with the wings and I finally came up with, let me just turn this page here so you can see it. I finally came up with this shape here. It took me a while. That's why I usually don't uh, draw my stencils on camera because sometimes it takes a really long time for me to get it looking the way I want it to look. And I do a lot of erasing and starting over. So basically this is the stencil that I've created. And what I do from here is I take a photo of it and I put it in Photoshop just to clean it up, you know, to get all the little marks off it. And I try to make it as black and white as possible so that when you print it out, you can actually see it. The next step is that I save it as a PDF file and I upload it to my, um, I think it's Google Drive that I upload it to. And I make the link open to anyone who has the link. And then I put it in the description below and you can download it and print it. And what I do is... Uh, in this case for the painting, sometimes I use graphite transfer paper, which is really great for when I'm drawing because I don't necessarily want to erase my pencil marks when I'm drawing. But when I'm doing paintings, especially watercolor, I don't want to have uh, graphite on my page or at least too much of it. I want to try to erase some of it. So what I did with this one is I took my graphite, just a regular graphite pencil and just so you know, pencils. All pencils are graphite. Sometimes they're called lead pencils, but they're made of graphite. And on the back of the stencil, I just colored it all in like this with graphite. Pretty dark all around the hummingbird. And then I put this on 
my canvas and I took a sharp pencil and I just drew around it. And when you do that, it transfers your image onto your canvas. I have a video about that and I'll link that below too. So I just wanted to show you the process of how I come up with my stencils and my drawings. And this is the end result here. I hope you can see this. My lights are very, very bright. But I basically have the stencil on my page too. I took a, a pencil and I just very lightly drew some areas where I want to put the flowers, where the hummingbird is going to be um, pollinating and drinking the nectar. I have a rubber eraser here. This is called a kneaded eraser because you can knead it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over it a little bit, over my stencil a little bit to try to get off as much graphite as possible because I don't want that mixing with my watercolor paints. There is going to be a little bit because I want to have a reference on there. I'm not doing an abstract today. I'm doing, I'm going to do a loose watercolor painting. It's not going to be, you know, a realistic by any means, but I do want to take off as much of the graphite as possible. And I'm not erasing like this because I don't want to ruin my canvas, the paper. So I'm just kind of, I guess you could call it blotting the paper all where I have the graphite outline of the hummingbird. I'm just going to try to make it, and the flowers too, I'm just going to try to make the graphite as light as possible. If you're doing this at home, then do it to, uh, you know, as much as you want, where you feel comfortable enough that you can still see your stencil. Because if you take off too much and you lose your stencil, you might lose the form of what you're trying to paint. And we do want this to look like a hummingbird. All right. I'm okay with that. I can still see my stencil. You might not be able to, but I can still see it. I'm just using an old dollar store paintbrush that I've never used for paint just to wipe off all the bits here. So I have to decide which colors I'm using. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to be using blues and greens for the actual hummingbird. His beak or her beak might be a dark blue and maybe parts of the tail will be a little bit of a dark blue. And for the flowers, I'm going to mix up some reds and whites to make some pinks and I'll put some stems. I have pet hair everywhere. <laughs> All right. A little green maybe for the stems but I do want to make this kind of loose so I know you won't be able to see the paint but I will show you what I'm doing as I go along so what I'm going to start with is I've got a small round brush here let me find it it's just a small round brush it's a number two round brush and what I'm going to do is let me put my water a little closer And I'll keep my paints in my in my hand so that I can show you which ones I'm using. So I'm just wetting my paintbrush and dabbing it off. And I'm going around the inside of the hummingbird with water. I'm not putting water all over my page, just on the inside of the hummingbird's head right now. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, I believe this is a phthalo green. I can't be 100% sure because there's no, um, I didn't write down what colors they are. So choose a nice vibrant green. What I did here, let me put my paint brush down. Whenever I get new paints, I do a swatch. So the one I'm using is this one. That might give you an idea. It's a bright, I think it's a phthalo green. So I'm just going in and I'm dabbing a little bit around the head of the hummingbird. And I'm not going to go into the eye. Paint might get into the eye, but that's okay. I'm going to come around with a little black after that. See, if you put the water inside the head like that, the paint is going to follow where the water is. If, for example, 
I put a whole bunch of water all over the place here. I'm not going to get the shape because the paint is always going to follow the water. All right, so now I'm just going to go, I'm going to do the same thing. I got a little bit outside the hummingbird there, but that's okay. I want it to be loose. And I'm putting more water along the body of the hummingbird. And yes, it's mixing with the green, but that's okay. I'm doing this in stages. And as you can see, the eye got completely covered with green, but like I said, that's all right. So now I'm going to choose a nice vibrant blue. It's probably a phthalo blue, this one here. It's probably a phthalo blue. I'm just loading up my wet brush into the pan. And I don't suggest you do this over your canvas. <laughs> I'm just doing that to show you. And I'm just kind of blending it in here. I'm dabbing off my brush a little bit and I'm going to try to blend the green and the blue together. Just bringing up the blue and the green down just so that it blends. So we don't have like this like solid green color and then a line and then blue. I want it to really blend nicely. This is a very fun way to do watercolors. I love the blending aspect of watercolors. Just getting a little more of that blue, which I believe is phthalo. I don't want my brush to be too wet, but I'm just adding a little more color here and there. You see how vibrant these colors are? I love these these um, pan paints, they're really nice. I'm just gonna add a little more water just to blend. All right, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm gonna do the same thing for the whole hummingbird. Now I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna work I should have probably started with the wings. I should have worked left to right so that I don't smear my my hummingbird's head, but I think I can do it now. I'm going to wet the wings. I'll start with the top wing. Make sure, I'm gonna show you something, and I'm gonna put my paper towel over it. There is a droplet of water sitting on this area here of my paintbrush. Always make sure you get that off, just dab it because you don't want to be painting along, painting along, and then a drop of water goes somewhere next to you, especially if you have a painted area. You can always dab it off, but why not err on the side of caution, right? So make sure you get any of that extra water off your brush. And I'm just doing, like I said, I'm doing the same thing. Filling in the wing with water, and I'm just starting with the top wing. Just spreading that water all the way down. And you do sort of have to work a little quickly because the water dries quite quickly, depending on how much you put on. Mine already dried, that's why I put an extra coat on. So for this, I'm going to take this color blue here. So that's one, two, three, the fourth. It looks dark, but it's not. Okay, and I'm doing the same thing. Oh, that's a nice blue. I'm just filling in where I have my water with the blue color. You can dab or you can use your brush and paint like this. I just want, you know, I want to show you how fun it is. Watercolor is really, really a, a great medium. I love it and I'm gonna try to blend that in here. Put a little more water, dab, and bring up some of that darker blue into the wing. Okay, and what I wanna do is remove some of that paint because I want it to be a little transparent on the wing and I'm just, why don't I show you what I'm doing? I'm wetting my brush, I'm dabbing it off a little bit and I'm choosing areas where I'm just removing some of that paint. 
and I'm dabbing it off, wetting my brush, and doing it again because I want it to be a little more transparent on that top wing. There. Now, personally, I don't like to see graphite at all on my paintings, so I'm going to take some more of that lighter blue color and I'm going to go over the edges. And I did not dab my pen, my, my um, paintbrush, and there's a droplet of water there. If that had fallen on my painting, I would not have been happy. <laughs> so I'm just going over the edges here where I can see the graphite. And then I'm going to take a little water, dab it, and blend that so that it's not such a blue line. You know, I just want to blend it a bit. And then again, I want to remove some of that blue to make it a little more transparent in some areas. This is just what I'm doing. You can do whatever you want. That's your painting. Because I do want it a little more transparent. Now, what's happening here is that I see a green line like that. I want that to be a little more blended. So I'm going to wet my brush, put it back into that green color, and I'm going to dab a little bit of green here. I've completely lost the eye. I'm going to have to find it later. <laughs> and then into the water, and I'm going to blend it into the blue completely. And you may need to put more water on your brush. And again, I'm kind of removing some of that dark green. And that helps it to blend and it gives it a little more depth. So it's not a solid color. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the other wing. Now, I might choose a larger brush because this wing is bigger. I like round brushes when I'm doing watercolors. So I'm just wetting my brush, dabbing off the drops of water, and I'm going to wet that second wing. I'm going to try to work a little quickly here so that it doesn't dry. I'm getting it nice and wet, but I'm staying in the stencil lines. All right, and I'm gonna use that light blue again. It was this one, I believe. I'm loading it up. And I'm going to just dab. And I wish you could hear what I'm hearing right now because I am actually hearing hummingbirds outside. As I paint this, it's mid-May here in rural New Brunswick, Canada. And the hummingbirds are back. They've completed their migration from South America and they're at my feeders now. I love to feed the birds. I like to take care of them. They need nectar. I mean, they've come a long way. Can you imagine from South America all the way to New Brunswick, Canada? That's a long way for little, little birds like that. You can see some of the pigment here. So I'm gonna wipe off my brush and I'm gonna just pull some of that pigment off because I don't want the pigment on there like that. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit more of that blue color. I'm doing quite a few layers here. A little more of that blue color to the second wing here.
and I'm trying to keep the shape of the wing here. And I'm going to go in with a clean brush that I've wiped and I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. I want to take off some of that paint because I want it to have a bit of texture. I want you to be able to see parts of that wing. All right. There. All right. I'm happy with that. So while this wing dries, I'm going to work on the body of the hummingbird. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Wet my brush and dab off the little droplets of water. And I'm going to get the whole body here wet. Like I said before, I'm, I'm working a little quickly because I don't want it to dry. But you don't want to have too much water either because you don't want to have puddles. I'm actually taking the opportunity to blend a little bit of the, uh, the blue and the green again here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go back into that, what I believe is the phthalo blue again, which is, which one is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four six this one here I need a little more water I believe that's the one and I'm gonna dab yeah that's the one that's a really nice color just gonna dab all right back into that blue bring some of that blue into the wing. Just like that. And a little more just into this area here. I'm just putting a little water on my brush and I'm going to blend that just a little bit. And I've just made another executive decision. <laughs> I'm going to put a little green into the body here. That really nice, I think it's phthalo green, like I said. I'm just going to dab that into the front area here. A little bit of water just to blend that in. Now, what happened here was I went out of my line a little bit, which is not a big deal, but if you're like me and you kind of borderline uh, perfection, <laughs> although this is not supposed to be perfect, uh, you can just take a wet paper towel and just kind of wipe off whatever you don't like, but don't wait too long. Don't wait till it dries or it'll be too hard to wipe it off. I've just got clean water now and I'm going to remove some of that and then blend it. Don't forget to wipe the droplets off of your paintbrush so you don't have drops all over the place. All right, a little more blending here. So far so good, I'm liking this. So my pale blue has pretty much dried up here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm putting on a little bit of water just around that dark blue area. And I'm gonna go into that light blue again. And just dab.
I'm dabbing. Now I'm going to take a clean brush and just blend. And I'm removing a little bit of the paint here and there just to put a little detail into the wing. You know what? I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave it as is. Just blend some of that darker blue up here. All right. Nice blue colors here. Now I'm going to work on the tail and the tail is a little, I'm going to make it a little darker and I'm going to stick with the blues. So I'm looking at my swatch and I believe this is a Prussian blue here. So I'm going to use that one for the tail. But I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. I'm just going to outline the tail with water. Staying inside my stencil lines for this one. I'm going to try anyway. And I might take my thinner brush for this, for this part. I have a little water droplet there, so I'm just gonna... I had a little splash of water. So I've got all of my tail filled in with water here. And like I said, I'm gonna take the Prussian blue, which is a nice dark blue. And I'm going to gently, with the tip of my paintbrush, I'm dabbing in that Prussian blue. I might do a second layer because I do want that dark really lightly. There, just very lightly applying that. that Prussian blue. And I want a little point at the end of the tail here, just like that. I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but my hound dog is snoring. <laughs> like I said, I want that tail pretty dark, so I'm going to add quite a thick layer of it. That's how I want it. That's exactly how I want it. I might do a little bit of a point at the end here. Just like that. I might put a second layer on. I'm not sure. And I want to do the same thing with the beak. So first, I'm wiping off my paintbrush. And I'm going to put water into the beak. This is going to be hard for me because I'm not... I really am not somebody who is good at small details, but I'm going to try my best. I have an even smaller brush that I could use actually, but I'll try to, I'll try to do this. Okay, I'm going to take that Prussian blue. Wish me luck. <laughs> Yeah, the water already dried there, but you know what? That's okay. I'm going to treat it like it's an acrylic. Because this is very delicate. And I've got shaky hands. Okay, I think that's good. Whew. That was stressful. <laughs> stressful for me. It shouldn't be. It's painting. I'm going to wet my brush because I just want to soften up that edge here and blend it in a little bit. Okay. Now, my bird's head is dry, so I'm going to go back into that Prussian blue and I'm going to look back at my Okay, I'm looking at my stencil because the eye is in line with the beak. 
So I'm just going to make a little eye here. I think that's probably where it was. And I'm going to fill that in with the Prussian blue to make it nice and dark. Okay. Oh, I'm liking this. It's pretty simple, huh? Watercolor is a lot of fun. You could have, you could have used oranges and yellows and reds, uh, pinks and whites and reds. I mean, there's limitless possibilities. You don't have to make it look realistic like a real hummingbird because you just want to have a lot of fun with it. So I am going to, let's see, what I'm going to do now is work on the flowers, I think. And this is going to be very, very loose. Now, I've got my rubber eraser again, and I'm going to erase a little more of the graphite. You probably can't see it, but I can because I want to sort of make this part slightly abstract. I'm being very careful not to touch the beak because I can see that it's still a little wet. But I don't want this to necessarily look like flowers. This is going to be very abstract, like I said, and I'm going to use pinks and reds. Okay, let me get some of that extra graphite off here. Okay, I know you probably can't see that, but let me try to get the little eraser bits off there. Okay. Now I'm going to make sure that this dries very well. The thing with watercolor is you think it might be dry. You touch it. Yeah, maybe it's dry. It may not always be dry. It really takes a long time for watercolors to really, really dry well. So if you can avoid putting any water or any kind of paint near the bird's beak, I suggest you do that. And if you have to, make this area of the flower the last thing you do on this page. So what I'm going to do right now is mix a few colors. And like I said, don't do this over your canvas. The only reason I'm doing it over my canvas is to show you. And I've got some clean water. I'm going to take some white right away. I'm going to try to fill up my big brush with white. And I'm just putting some white in here. Okay, and then I'm going to take this color red here just a very little bit because I want to make kind of a pinkish color. Oh, that's pretty. Can you see that? That's my little pinkish color right there. And I might have to add more white. I want to have enough on here to do several flowers. So I've got a little bit of water that I'm adding. And I don't feel like washing off this brush, okay? I'm just trying to balance it here. Okay, I'll have to put it up here. So I'm going to take a clean brush here and get my white out with a clean brush and just put it at the edge here. And I'm going to keep this brush handy for when I want to add more white. And I'm going to bring that into this here. And it's making a nice little pinky color. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do here. Like I said, I'm doing abstract. And I'm not painting in water first, like I did with the hummingbird, because this I don't mind. I want it to look like flowers, but I don't necessarily care if it's exactly looking like flowers, if you know what I mean, if I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> I'm just making little petals here with my nice big round brush. This is my favorite, favorite brush for watercolor. And I'm avoiding going near that beak for now. And I'll finish that up after. You really don't need a lot of paint. And this may look funny the way I'm doing it, but I'm trying to 
not move my canvas around so that it's not annoying for people to see. <laughs> so I'm trying to do it like this. And I'm purposely leaving the middles of the flowers a little open. I can't do it that way, so I'm just going to have to do it this way. There's a little middle there. All right. I just added a little more water to get a little more of that pigment. I'll try to do it backwards like this. And I'm bringing it all the way down to the bottom of the canvas here. See, it goes on the masking tape, but that's great because then we're going to have a nice framed painting. Okay, I'm going to be very careful. And you see what happened? I got a few, uh, few little dots here of pink that I'm just taking a wet paper towel. My stomach is grumbling. I hope you can't hear that. <laughs> and I'm just dabbing it off while it's still wet. All right. So where was I? Yes, I was doing some pinks. And I was going to carefully, carefully go around the beak. Okay, that's good. I think that's okay. No danger of the blue bleeding into the pink. I'm just removing some of those puddles very carefully. And to remove the puddles, take a dry brush, or you know it's not completely dry, but drier, and then wipe it off. because I don't want puddles of water. And I want this to dry relatively quickly because I'm doing a lesson. I could always pause the video and then start it all over when it dries, but I want this to be a real-time lesson. So I'm just removing some of the paint like that. And that's going to dry quite quickly. All right. One way you can dry your watercolor quicker is to use a hair dryer. I know a lot of people use that. I'm not a fan of, of that at all. I like it to dry naturally. Um, but using a hair dryer is kind of neat sometimes because if you lift up your canvas and you use a hair dryer, you can make little kind of shapes in your watercolor. It's kind of fun to do that. All right. So I'm going to. Now I'm going to use, I think, this same red color here, but I'm not going to put any white in it. So I'm just off camera here. I'm just going to add more red to that little spot of pink we had. I'm going to add some more, just off camera, like I said, because I don't want um, I don't want to splash my painting. Okay, so I'm dabbing it in wiping it down and I'm just going to go in and put a few darker areas inside where the white is. And you see I'm just dabbing, just dabbing. And inside here, sort of a round area. And there is quite a bit of paint there. Again, being very careful around that beak. Okay, that works. That works really well. I almost said that works good. <laughs> I got good grammar. Okay, let's see. I don't want it to be a perfect circle. Actually, what I'm seeing right now 
you may notice I have a little puddle right there. I do not want that to bleed out. So I'm taking a piece of paper towel, just a corner, and I'm soaking up some of that paint. I can do that here too, because I've got a little puddle. And you know, when you look at a flower, I don't know the, the parts of the flower. I know the petals, the inside, the stamina, is that what it's called? Stamen, I'm not sure. Some parts are light, some parts are dark. And that's how you can kind of create your white color. Okay, so I think I'm done with my pinks and reds. The last thing I want to do is put in some green color. And this part here is dry to the touch. So I'm hoping that I'll be okay putting in my green color. I don't want the green to bleed into the pink because it might not look nice. So I'm using this light green here, almost looks like a lime green. Putting some water on there. And I'm just going to put in some green like this. Just a little bit here. just on the edges and that's it. That's all I want to do with the green. I don't want too much to be there because the emphasis is really the, the hummingbird. So I'm just going to take my paper towel again, dry it off, dry off my paintbrush and I'm pulling off some of that green. It's bleeding a little bit into the pink, so I'm wiping it off with a clean brush. Clean brush, wiping that green off the pink. Don't want that on the pink. Oh, that one's really on it there. Okay, are there any other spots that I want to take it off? Right here? Well, no, actually, I'll put that back on right there. You know what? I might put a little darker green. I'm thinking I want a little darker green on there. So I'm going to choose this green here. And I'm going to be real, really careful because that's quite dark. Yeah, that's quite dark. That might be, is it called hooker green maybe? Hooker green or hunter green. Not sure which one it is. Like I said, I couldn't find, I know on the outside package there was a list of the colors, but I don't have that outside package anymore. Okay. And I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before with a clean, dry brush. Take it off anywhere where I don't want it to be on the pink. And you see, when your first layer is dry, you can do this and not worry about pulling all your cover color off. Right here too. But you have to make sure that it's really dry. I mean, I'm pushing it right now. I really should let it sit for a while before I start doing this, but. There. So here's a little fun thing that we can do. My hummingbird is more or less dry. There are some parts of the, um, the flower that are still wet, but I'm going to actually just drape over a piece. I'm going to fold my paper towel in half and I'm going to just drape it over my hummingbird just like that because I'm going to do something fun. I'm going to take, let's see, I have to be careful here with my space, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. That same red that we used to make the pink, I'm going to take a bunch of that, 
and put it on my palette here. And I'm going to add some water and mix that around. I want you to see what I'm doing. I have just um, a pencil. I'm dabbing off excess water, okay? So watch what I'm going to do with my pencil. All over the flowers too. Just putting a little splatter. I love putting splatter on as background, but obviously we don't want to get any of this onto our, our hummingbird, right? So I'm going to put more there as my stomach grumbles. <laughs> Let me just make sure that I don't have any paint on here, okay? I have to be so very careful here. All right. I know that a little bit of his, his or her beak is showing, but I'm going to be careful not to put any splatter on that. this down for a second. Lift that up carefully. Okay, so far so good. I got a little bit there on the wing, so I'm going to take a, a little clean part of my paper towel and wipe that off. Alright, just wipe all that off. Now here's where we get, we have to be very careful. I'm actually going to rip my paper towel in half and I'm going to go Put the paper towel here and right against the wing here because I want to get that little spot there. I'm putting more on my brush here, getting my pencil. Okay, that's good. Oh, while we're at it, why don't we do down here? Hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to put my paintbrush down and my pencil and I'm going to go and do that again. Okay. I'm going to cover up the wing. Okay. I better fold that a little better. Cover up the wing here and cover up the tail and go in and put some more splatter on there. Okay, let's do it. All right, and now maybe the other side of the tail here. Last but not least here, just in front of the body, and I'm going to cover up the beak, putting some more of that red onto my brush, and splatter away. <laughs> Put a little more on the flowers too. All right. Let me check this out, see if I missed anywhere. Nope, I think that looks pretty good. I did get a few on, on the wing, but that's okay. I love doing splatter because splatter basically gives the background a little bit of interest if you don't feel like painting in the entire background, which a lot of the time I don't feel like doing with watercolor because I find that you should do your background pretty much first and then work around it. You know, like if if I wanted to draw out my hummingbird, I would start my background 
and avoid all of the hummingbird area and then if some of my background color got into the hummingbird I would just take a wet paper towel and I would wipe it off it to me sometimes a background is just overkill when it comes to watercolor but that's me if you want to have a background that's great so I think that my green is dry enough and this splatter actually does dry quite quickly so I think we can start taking off the masking tape I completely forgot that we need to put the twinkle in the hummingbird's eye. I can't believe I forgot that. So I'm inserting this part, even though I already took off the masking tape for the video, I'm going to insert this little spot here. I've got this white acrylic painting pen, and I'm going to be very careful because my paint is still a little wet, but I'm going to put a little dot in his eye. I don't know if you can see that, but it's right there. Just a little white dot in his eye. So don't forget to do that. If you have a painting pen, that works perfectly. If you don't have a painting pen, you could use a tube of white acrylic paint or a tube of white watercolor paint. You just want it to stand out a little bit. Very, very slowly and gently because Sometimes it could rip your paper depending on how much water you had on your paper. And you don't want it to rip your paper because that kind of sucks. And sometimes it does bleed underneath. The watercolor might bleed underneath your paper. That's always possible too. But in this painting I didn't really paint up to the edges except for this side. So now I'm going to see if I put on my masking tape well enough <laughs> for that green because it did bleed through onto this side of the masking tape. So let's take a look. Ah, perfect. <laughs> All right, my friends. So there we go. There's a watercolor hummingbird for you. I hope that you enjoyed this painting lesson and please leave me a comment. Let me know if you liked it, if you have any ideas for future painting lessons that you want to see. Uh, let me know if you like the splatter, what colors you used, and if you like this video, please like and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. And if you want to have your kids learn how to paint or draw, check out my YouTube channel, Rain Francis Art for Kids. I have every link possible below. <laughs> I'm also on Instagram, so you can connect with me there. Thank you so much again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!